All right, so in the last video, we found uh, that this information gave us potentially, or gave us two triangles. And so this was the ambiguous case. And we went through and solved our first triangle, which gave us B as an acute angle measure here. Now, when we're dealing with trying to figure out our second triangle, um, we're going to have a situation like this where side BC kind of swings over and will give us something like this, where this angle, where this side length is congruent to this side um, and gives us this second triangle here, where this, right, this angle here is, we can call it B prime. Um, so we can see that in this here. So we can see that we have this side length here, which is congruent to this side here. Uh, we know that this was 71.1 degrees, meaning because if we kind of ignore this here, we just look at um, B prime BC, this triangle. This triangle is an isosceles triangle because it has two congruent sides, which means these base angles are congruent. So that means that this measure here is also 71.1 degrees. And this is gonna help us because then if we're trying to find and solve this smaller triangle here, we know that these two angles here are supplementary, meaning that they sum to be 180 degrees. So we're gonna use the fact that this angle here is congruent to this being 71.1 degrees to help us solve our second triangle. So let's take a look at solving our second triangle. So we have this triangle here. Again, remember if we extend this side, uh, we had this measure here being 71.1 degrees. And because these two are supplementary, that means that B prime, the measure of B prime is just 180 degrees minus 71.1 degrees. So that means that the measure of B prime is going to be 108 degrees. 0.9 degrees. So we found our first angle measure. So this angle here is 108.9 degrees. And then we can find the measure of angle C, or we can call it C prime. I'm going to call it C prime because it's our new angle measure. Uh, C prime is just 180 minus the sum of our other two. So 58 degrees plus 108.9 degrees. And that turns out to be 13.1 degrees. So the measure of angle C is 13.1 degrees. And now we just have to find the length of C prime, this little angle or this little side here. And we're going to just use law of sines. So we'll say the sine of 58 degrees over 20. Actually, we'll say C divided by the sine of 13.1 degrees equals uh, 26 divided by the sine of 58 degrees. Multiply both sides by the sine of 13.1, and we get that C equals 26 times the sine of 13.1 degrees, all divided by the sine of 58 degrees. When you plug this into your calculator, you get that the length of side C is about 6.9 units. So this measures about 6.9. And that would be how you would find the measures of our second triangle. Really, it's not much more work. We just have to use the law of sines once again. But the way that we get this measure here of 108.9 was using the fact that when this side BC swings over, it's creating this isosceles triangle, so these base angles are congruent, meaning that these two are supplementary. And that's how we use the information that we got from our first triangle to help us solve our second triangle here.